Thank you so much for having me here. And I, listen, I've got the graveyard slot, so I don't know how I'm supposed to follow up an explosion and melting plastic and balls kind of swinging out everywhere. So I thought I'd wear the shiniest top possible in a pink suit. So why not? <laughs> the stereotype of what a geologist looks like. That's what I'm all about. Um, my job here today is to bring you back down to earth with a bit of a bump, really. I'm here to tell you about one of the most spectacular places in the world. It literally is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's called the Jurassic Coast. And it's one of my favourite places in the world in terms of the stories it tells us about the planet that we live on called Earth. It really is one of the most spectacular places on Earth. Now, as an Earth scientist, another word that I like to call myself is a rock whisperer. <laughs> and I have one here. It's not going to explode, don't worry. It's not going to be melting plastic or anything like that. It is a real rock. It's a beautiful rock. And when I hold rocks, I don't know about you, but whenever you walk past a rock next time, Put your hand on it, obviously in a very safe place, in a pub, you know, don't, you know, uh, be careful where the, it's not in the middle of a road with a bus coming towards you. Uh, usually, you know, if you're in a bank or a library or a posh building, they usually have the best rocks. Um, because that's what, you know, colonial times did to uh, the natural world, source the best rocks possible for expensive buildings. Um, this rock... This rock, when I hold them, actually, I can hear the stories coming out. And I, I'm listening. Hello? Yeah? I, OK, good. Right. Uh, right, excellent. Good story. Uh, this rock is actually a limestone. It is from the same rocks that you see at Burton Bradstock, which is the picture behind me. This is a middle, middle Jurassic limestone. It's 170 million years old. And what I love about geology is I literally, it is a time machine in my hand. And there's very few sciences, I think, that can allow you to travel through time. And I'm not talking, you know, we do have the Doctor Who's probably in the audience and the people that can explain the science behind Doctor Who. But this is the real thing. This is the real thing. This is a real time machine. And it's not just a 170 million year old piece of limestone in my hand. This is a fragment of life. Inside this rock is a spiral shell. It's an ammonite. They don't live on Earth anymore. They're, they have their ancestors like the Nautilus. But the ammonite became extinct. And this particular one, I have to say this again, because sometimes I lose myself in the work that I do. I kind of lose the gravity of the things that I hold in my hand. 170 million years ago, this creature was alive and it was swimming in these seas. And when you look at these rocks in these cliffs, the next time you go to the Jurassic Coast, when you look at these rocks in the cliffs, what you have to think about is that they are literally a pile of overdue library books or books that you have in your to-be-read pile at home. I'm sure everybody's got that on their bedside table. And the book that you bought, you know, last Christmas or you were given last Christmas, that one's sitting right at the bottom of the cliff. And as you go up through the layers of the cliffs, uh, sorry, through the layers of the cliff, it becomes the book that you bought, you know, that you got for Mother's Day or Father's Day, the book that you got for your birthday, the book that somebody gave you that thought, you know, I haven't actually read this, but I think you'll like it, all the way up to the most recent book on your to-be-read pile. And every single book in your to-be-read pile has a different story, as do the layers in these rocks. And that is the magic of geology, because they those rocks have stories locked inside them. And as earth scientists, geologists, rock whisperers, whatever you want to call us, usually boring, dull people, but anyway, uh, our job is to interpret those stories and make you feel a sense of wonder about the next time you're sitting on those beaches. Not too close to the cliffs, by the way. That's a disclaimer I have to put in. Uh, eating an ice cream, eating your picnic, you're looking at those rocks and you're wondering about 170 million years of time locked in these particular rocks. 
If I was to try and explain why the Jurassic Coast records 185 million years of geological time in just 95 miles of coast, I could be here for 185 million years. But very quickly, you've got rocks that are laid down in horizontal layers. And there are three time periods that you can see spanning those 95 miles of coast. The Triassic rocks came first. They were deposited about 250 million years ago. Then on top of that, we had a big sequence of Jurassic rocks. So everybody's thinking of Jurassic Park at this moment, but you know, this is not that particular. You know, in England, we don't really have those great big dinosaurs that you see in China and North America. But we do have the Jurassic period, and those rocks are slightly different. So we have a big period of Jurassic rocks being deposited on top. Then we have some Cretaceous rocks. So we've got horizontal rock layers building up over quite a long period of time. Then all of a sudden, tectonics happens. Those rocks are shifted and tilted and uplifted. And as they tilt, they, they get pushed up. And the upper part of those rock layers are eroded away. So you get an erosional surface. So those rocks are horizontal. They're tilted toward the east. They're eroded. And then more rocks are deposited on top and those are more Cretaceous rocks. And it's this amazing, extraordinary coincidence of geology that gives us this beautiful expression of time across 95 miles of coast. And the Jurassic Coast starts, <laughs> effectively, according to UNESCO designation, it starts in Exmouth in East Devon, and it runs all the way to Swanage in Dorset. So if you perhaps, you know, over October half term or whenever you fancy having a long walk, about 95 miles, uh, across 185 million years of time, you can walk from Exmouth all the way to Swanage. Or it's probably take you about five days to walk and you'll probably get very wet socks and sore feet by the end. But that is, that is walking the World Heritage Site. You can actually do it. It is beautiful. Let's start this story by really examining some of the these brilliant rocks. These are the Triassic rocks in Sidmouth and East Devon. And they're about 250 million years old, and they were deposited in these incredibly beautiful, dry, arid deserts. This is kind of what it looks like today. And as geologists, what we try to do with rocks is tell a story by using what's happening today as a guide to what formed those rocks of the past. There were these really weird animals living at those times. Um, their fossils are incredibly rare, but you do find them over in Sidmouth, and they're called rinkosaurs. But this was an incredibly dry, arid environment, and the rocks reflect that they are. They are these rich red sandstones. This is a popular place, isn't it? Who's not been to Charmouth and Lyme Regis to look for fossils? Hands up if you've been there. Hopefully you have, yeah. And of course, Charmouth and Lyme Regis are famous for one of the greatest paleontologists that ever lived, Mary Anning. So, ha, yes, yeah, give Mary Anning. Yeah. I'm standing here today, thanks to Mary Anning, and actually just down the road at the Geological Society of London, um, Mary Anning's work was presented there. So, you know, she did all of her research on uh, marine reptiles of the Jurassic period. What you probably didn't know is that they slammed the doors in her face and they didn't let her in because she was a woman, because she was working class, because she didn't have an education. So 200 years ago, her work was presented by her friends and colleagues and her supporters at the Geological Society of London down the road. And it was only much later that she got the recognition she deserved. But these were the rocks that made Mary Anning. These Jurassic rocks in Charmouth and Lyme Regis in Dorset formed in this incredible Jurassic Sea. So when you think about Jurassic Park, yeah, that's all great dinosaurs and, t you know, all of that. And actually, T-Rex is Cretaceous. But anyway, you know, what's a, what's a dinosaur between friends? Um, this is why the Jurassic Coast is famous. You can go to places like Charmouth and Lyme Regis, and all of these beautiful fossils are there for you to see. So, you know, this one, I found this over at the Simmonsbury Estate, uh, just north of Bridport, but go to Lyme Regis, go to Charmouth, and see the fossils for yourself, because that is where a love for science is born through experiences like that. That's certainly what happened to me and why I'm talking to you today as an earth scientist. The Jurassic Coast is 
particularly special because the beaches are filled with these fossils because the cliffs are naturally eroding. And if you go further along the coast, you'll come to the Cretaceous rocks, and this is where it gets really exciting because we have dinosaur footprints in Dorset. And here's my daughter, you know, before she became a surly teenager, jumping. <laughs> she won't do this now, and she'll be horrified that I'm showing you this video. But um, she's jumping into dinosaur footprints at Keats Quarry in Purbeck. And Purbeck is this beautiful story. There's a story there of limestone. So limestones forming in swamps and jungles. It's a chemical sedimentary rock. It's formed from very fine particles of mud that kind of stick together to form this fine-grained rock. But in this area, you had dinosaurs walking over over these jungles and these swamps. In fact, Dorset is really the super highway for dinosaurs travelling to the Isle of Wight, which is, they got all the bones, but we had the dinosaurs, so hey, you know, we're not jealous. Um, Jurassic Coast is also famous for these beautiful landforms, and this is kind of where my talk closes, because this is, a, this is a plea for you to come and enjoy this beautiful site. There are so many incredible stories there. It's, I live... I live about 20 minutes away from Durdle Door. I'm very lucky to be there. But it's a place of extraordinary awe and wonder. And it's a place where the rocks will actually talk to you and tell you the stories if you fancy listening to them. So thank you for having me. And <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.